if your dog is one of these breeds. then they might be keeping a secret from you. And not like a twirl your evil mustache kind of secret. Aha! But in more of like a, this is what I was born to do kind of way. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today in today's episode. And are you severely underestimating your dog's potential? I'm Ken Steep and welcome back to McCann Dogs. So I'm here with my sheep herding instructor, Vicky Kidd. I wanted to ask her about, you know, some of the herding breeds. So you might have your uh, pet dog at home, Border Collie, Belgian Malinois, Briard, uh, certainly Australian cattle dog. There's all kinds of herding breeds. But w where does that herding instinct come from in these dogs, Vicky? Um, the herding instinct comes from a long line of selective breeding by and this is not to be politically incorrect, but by shepherds from long time ago, male shepherds, they needed a dog that could be a helpmate uh, all day long doing their livelihood. And consequently, they wanted, they selectively bred for dogs that could do specific tasks. The Border Collie generally can do most, if not all tasks, but other herding breeds, uh, such as Ken mentioned, the Briard, the Kelpie, the Aussie, the Sheltie, the Bearded Collie, they all do it to greater and lesser degrees because they had specific tasks that they were designed for. I.e., for those of you who love Bearded Collies, uh, they jump all around and they're kind of goofy and they do silly things and they bark a lot. Well, they were actually bred to do that. And the reason why is a shepherd would be out on the hills and the crags and the fails in Scotland and looking for single lost sheep and they would send the bearded collie out and they were so light and agile and then when they found a single sheep the dog would literally bounce up and down and bark its head off going it's here it's here <laughs> send the border collie yeah and the border collie would then go and collect it that's amazing um shelties uh for example they're very small the small shetland islands those uh, were bred specifically to look after one or two sheep in a back garden. Hmm. And they were bred to keep the sheep from eating the, um, the, the vegetables, the fruit and vegetables. And the, so the dogs would move a lot very fast and bark and keep the sheep in particular corners. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so, you know, Shelties, their feet move, their mouth moves. <laughs> um, Australian um, Shepherds, Australian Shepherds. Uh, it's a misnomer called Australian Shepherds. It's a completely U.S. man-made uh, man breed developed in California with some bass dogs that were imported from Australia. But that was a dog that was built to be broader shouldered, broader chested, uh, leaner in the back end uh, because they were developed to be drivers or drovers of sheep and cattle, more so cattle. And they needed to have big fronts, big heads, to come on to cattle and also to bark. They don't bite so much as um, bark and move the cattle along. They do do sheep, uh, but they're, they're called upright dogs. They don't have the, what's known as the Border Collie or the Kelpie Eye. Mm -hmm. uh, those eye, do, eye breeds move sheep with, and livestock with the power of their eye. The non-eye dogs, i.e. the bearded collie, the Aussie, the cattle dog, those dogs move it with the, the literally the force and size of their might. Same with Briards, Briards and Bouviers. Again, if you look at those dogs, they got big fronts, mm -hmm. yeah. right? They literally bumped into sheep. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So let's talk, you, you, ha you have lots of uh, different students. Talk about the experience that someone who brings their pet dog out, that uh, maybe it's, you know, they don't realize what uh, kind of herding dog they've got, but they want to try sheep herding. Talk about that experience. What do you see in those uh, pet dogs that come out and see stock for the first time? Um, first and foremost, I put them on uh, a long line in our, my training pen, and that's for the safety of all, the sheep, the handler, the dog, myself, because these dogs, hopefully they come out and they are keen as mustard. And the sign of a dog that's keen would be one 
that chases after the sheep initially. We don't not, we don't specifically want them to chase, but we want them to notice the sheep. And if they chase, um, what I would look for is a dog that actually moderates its pace. It doesn't just go flying in and sending sheep into what we call popcorn sheep all over the place. <laughs> Um, but we look for a dog that can moderate its pace, actually looks at the stock, and ideally they moderate their pace and they go around and around. All these hundreds of years of gathering livestock, dogs have a circling behavior, and I have plenty of people who actually say to me, oh, my dog would be a great herder because it circles the children and the things. And I absolutely believe those people. That is uh, an intuitive, instinctive behavior that's been bred into these dogs to go around livestock, whether it be sheep or cows or pigs or horses or fowl. They should go around the stock. Mm -hmm. Even the, the, the breeds that uh, drive sheep, they drive them and then go around them and drive them and go around them. Yeah. What, what do you see when you see a dog in, uh, who it's maybe their first or a couple times on sheep? What, how do you identify the dogs that are going to excel? The dogs that I believe are going to have potential, first of all, they have to look like they're interested in the stock. And that's a hard thing to generate and to understand because it can be mistakenly dogs that chase and run into livestock that they're interested. But all dogs have chase drive mm -hmm. and prey drive. Yeah. Something moves, they like to chase it. What, as I say, I look for is a dog that will moderate its pace. It will actually look at the stock and go, oh, and if they run at it, they go, oh, I just made a mess. What do I do? Uh, the other thing I want is a dog that can take a little bit of verbal discipline. And what I mean by that is when they're chasing the sheep, initially, I need to be able to be quite uh, strong in my voice to tell them to lie down. And I want a dog that can accept that kind of uh, verbal correction. Yep. Um, some dogs uh, take that as such a stressor that they, they can't deal with, you know, not chasing the sheep and not being um, told what to do. Uh, most dogs, if they get through that, then they have the potential to move forward. Yeah, interesting. It's um, different than, and the other thing that's really different about sheep herding or livestock herding from any other training, uh, maybe gun dogs and bird dogs, I don't know. Uh, but any other kind of uh, agility, fly ball, obedience, frisbee, the livestock are the reward. There's no kisses, toys, tugs, hugs, treats, none of that. The, the, the livestock has to be the reward. And if the reward, if the dog does not perceive the sheep as a great enough reward to do as being asked, um, they come back to the handler, they look for the treats, the tugs, the hugs, not that we have to convince them that the sheep are worthy of their time and attention. Yeah, yeah. Good. It, it's awesome to know when we talk about our uh, dog's five most uh, valuable rewards when we're working on something like obedience or getting your dog to listen, uh, where in this case, these sheep dogs need to understand this needs to be their thing. This needs to be the most valuable, most gratifying experience for them. Because this is essentially, it's, it's a modified predatory behavior. Yes, So, I mean, is. the dog's naturally wanting to, to put themselves in these positions, and we need to be able to hit the brakes if it's required. And the other thing about this is uh, it can be incredibly self-rewarding and this um, I always tell people that the yes while the sheep are the reward the dog has to learn just like any other kind of training that the reward comes through us it doesn't come from us ie we don't literally give them something right. but they can't get their reward unless they do something at our command and our expectation yeah um the most difficult thing to translate that to new dogs is that they can go ahead and get their reward without us right right easily yeah, yeah. and being four-legged creatures we can't catch them <laughs> no they're much faster than we are uh one of the things i love about training young dogs and and what you might have just seen with b is i say to her steady she doesn't necessarily know what steady means but somewhere deep within her, she goes, oh, I'm not supposed to go so fast. Oh, I, whoa, something goes. And the it just comes from inside. And the dog self-moderates and is, has their own discipline. And you see the little lights go off. And it brings me such great joy to see those dogs build 
on it themselves and how and come to their potentials. Now I'm not sure whether you've seen the uh, video we shot maybe a year ago about Mac and the reason I got him you know we got him a couple of years ago so that he could teach me something about herding. He was uh, he is an accomplished uh, open level competition herding dog and you know the amount that he's taught me about the sport is uh, you know something that I will I will forever be grateful to him for. You know, I remember Beeline's first time on Sheep when we were away at a, an agility trial and they were offering an opportunity for people to try their dogs on Sheep and it was so cool to see her, you know, just understand what to do without me giving her any information. And today you saw be working the Sheep a little bit and this is like maybe her fifth or sixth time ever on Sheep. So good. Seeing their brains just click in, uh, you know, because of hundreds of years of, uh, of selective breeding and, and watching the dogs understand what to do is an amazing thing for me. Now, I would absolutely encourage you to uh, see if there's someone in your area, someone that's relatively local to you, that can give you an opportunity to, to put your dog on some stock and see what you get from them. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we publish new videos every single week to help you spend some quality time with your four-legged family member. Beside us is actually a link to a playlist of our other vlogs. If you just joined the channel, you might want to check some of those out. On that note, I'm Ken. This is Kale. Happy training.